All right, so today we're going to talk through exercise 120, and, and this was actually my intent to include this with last class, but you guys did so much great work by yourselves that I felt like you needed more time to do that. So uh, things got pushed off a little bit, and that, that changes the, the order of things as we go forward, but that's okay. Um, hopefully you all have uh, pretty much a floor plan established, and uh, I have one here as well with a few key missing pieces um, that we're going to work on today. Uh, the big part of what we're trying to deal with today is how do you take something that is a very, very basic line drawing, something like this, and add a little bit of finesse to it, make it look like it's a really good floor plan. And one of the things that I want to concentrate on in this section of AutoCAD is really how do you get good looking stuff out? Because it's one thing to be able to draw the basics in AutoCAD, and it's another thing to have enough skill set to be able to make something that's worth presenting on a wall. And all too often, even in, in the, arc, uh, in the um, AutoCAD classes that you might take, it's much less about making presentation quality stuff and much more about learning how to do uh, some kind of complicated thing like dimensioning or something. Uh, which, of course, is important down the road. But for right now, really what it's about is making something that looks good and, and being able to get that something up on the wall and, and being proud of it and that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to work toward today. Uh, in the same time, I'm going to talk about some other things that are hidden within uh, the world of AutoCAD that are worth kind of working through. So I have, uh, I have my, my plan that I've drawn here. This is on the same piece of topography that you guys have. Um, I have my plan drawn on its own layer called the plan layer. And so if we look here at the upper ribbon, uh, we've been working on the home, the home ribbon. And about halfway across, there's something called layers. And this layers is really something that you're going to end up using a lot in the world of AutoCAD because it helps organize your file uh, and lets you control things. And it's something that uh, if you go to work for a firm, they're going to mandate that you use layers as well. So it's worth kind of learning about them and kind of their general processes here. Um, I can see what layers are currently in my uh, scene by clicking on the little drop down here. So I have a layer called zero, I have a layer called plan, and I have a layer to called topography. If you started with the topo file, you at least have layer 0 and you have topography. Um, those, I created the topography layer when I, uh, when I gave you the terrain. And layer 0 is the default layer that's in AutoCAD. And layer 0 is not a layer that you can delete and get rid of. It just exists. And it will exist in every AutoCAD file. Yeah. It's just part of the, the truth of things uh, in the world of AutoCAD. So I have those three layers. Now, I want to get a little bit more information about the layers. So instead of clicking the little drop down here, I'm going to click on this Layer Properties button, which is the big button right next to Layers. And that's going to bring up a, kind of a floating little window here. It likes to, to hide itself uh, into a little kind of side drawer. Sometimes it, it exists over on the side of your page, uh, and it'll show up. Um, but this is what we're looking at. And this is uh, the Layers window, and it gives us a lot more information about uh, our drawing and our layers. So if we look here, I have one currently active layer, which is the plan layer. It has the green check mark next to it. And I have a layer 0, and I have a layer called topography. If we look across, I'll, I'll highlight the plan layer for just a second. Okay? We have a little light bulb that has to do with turning the layer on or turning it off. And um, one of the, the, the obvious questions is, what is the difference between the light bulb and the freeze or thaw layer? Um, the, the simple answer is that the light bulb is a temporary thing. So you can temporarily turn off a layer, and if you refresh the drawing or you save it and open it again, it'll come back on, or it's supposed to. Freeze thaw is a permanent state. So you, you say, I want to freeze this layer. It will stay frozen until you unfreeze it or thaw it. Uh, and at that point, it'll show up again. And so it's kind of a permanent thing uh, that will be saved with your file um, when you save your file. The other thing is when you freeze and thaw a layer, it drops the layer out of being held active in the computer's memory. And so for the drawings that you guys are doing, your drawings are so small, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, whether you freeze or thaw or turn it off, it makes no difference. If you had a very complicated drawing with a lot of layers, uh, freezing or thawing is significantly better from a memory and a CPU standpoint in the computer to use than the just simple on and off. Um, and so. It would be good if you just got in the habit of using free, freeze and thaw instead. Um, but they're, both options are available to there. Uh, so right now, the plan layer is currently active, uh, which means that I can't 
freeze it, but I could freeze layer zero or I could freeze the topography. If I were to click on the topography layer, for example, you see that the little sun turns into a snowflake. Uh, it, it makes the topography disappear, um, which is essentially the purpose. Next to that, we have a little lock icon. And what a lock icon does is it allows us not to select or uh, modify the given layer. So I just lock the plan layer. If I were to try to select it, I can still select it. But if I were to try to delete it, nothing will happen. Right? Likewise, if I were to select it and then type move, obviously I can't move it because it's locked. Uh, the good news about locking a layer is I could still snap to it. So you see that it's still all of my points are still active. I can still snap to any one of those points, even though it's locked. So locking a layer ends up being something that is, is very, very useful, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and so for right now, we'll go ahead and leave it unlocked. Next, we have the color. And so white is, is the default color of all the layers uh, in this case. And white will end up printing black when you go uh, to the plotter. It's a little confusing if you pick a color of gray, because then it's the the actual color is what will be printed. So white is the only color that changes when you go to print. So if you were to pick, say, dark gray, it would show up dark gray on the screen. And when you go to print it, it would show up dark gray on a white paper. So it's just a little bit different. Um, and when we go into uh, paper space, it'll make a little bit more sense. And you can see the grays uh, a little bit better. Next to that, we have something called line type. And this would be if you wanted to change all the lines on a given layer to a specific line type. Let's say you wanted a dashed line or a hidden line or something like that. You could change all the lines to that type of line. Um, if we were to click on it right now, there's only a few options available for us. Um, you may only have continuous. You may also have hidden two loaded. If you want more line types, a center line, a phantom line, or one of the other line types, you'll have to actually load the line types. And you can do that by clicking the Load button here. Uh, and this will take you to uh, an almost infinite number of different line types, depending on what you're trying to, to use. I have a tendency to use this hidden two. For whatever reason, it seems to look good. And so that's one of my favorites, and I tend to load that, uh, which is probably why it's already preloaded in this, um, this drawing file, because I created it. Uh, but there are other line types that are available. Um, there's a dashed line. The difference is the dash and the hidden have a slight different spacing to them. Um, we have center lines, et cetera. So really, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you pick. Um, and you can, you're more than welcome to load any of those. Obviously, there are some specialty ones, like the gas line that's a, a line with gas written on it. Um, if you were doing something more of a working drawing set, maybe you would use that uh, at that point. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel, and then Cancel again. And then we'll move to the next category, which is called Line Weight. And so this is the thickness of an individual line. And if you flip over your little handout to the back side, you can see that I prepped a line weight guide for you uh, as just a way of kind of looking at it. And so if you look at this floor plan, you can see that certain things are a little bit darker than other things. And this is merely a guide for what I think is about right. Um, depending on what printer you use, the line weights are going to show up differently. The copy machine prints them differently than, say, the plotter does. So it's always good to do a test plot uh, on the actual printer you're going to print to make sure that the line weights look right. But this is pretty good um, kind of default set to go with. Um, and so you can see, for example, that my walls are at 0.4 millimeters. So if I wanted my walls to be set by the layer here, I can choose a 0.4 millimeter thickness. Okay? And if I say OK, all of the lines that are on that layer will get thicker. And we can see a little bit there. Um, looks like not all of my lines are there, but you get the idea. Let me see if I can make this a minute. Yeah, some of these are not set to be by layer. Hold on a second. There we go. So everything on that layer is now that 0.4. And if I were looking at it, there's a lot of things that are really too thick at 0.4 that I'm going to need to modify and change a little bit. But you get the idea. So let me go back to my layers again. And I'm going to change that back from 0.4 to default, which is at the very top. And I'll say OK. okay. As we move over, we have something called transparency. If we wanted certain lines to be a little bit transparent or certain fills to be a little bit transparent, we could adjust them there. I, I don't know that I've ever used this in practice, but it exists and it is a feature. So we'll talk about it. 
Um, plot styles are something far too complicated to get into in this class, um, but it, it's, a, it's a special way of plotting. A lot of times in, a, in an architectural firm, you'll be using plot styles, and your line, basically what a plot style does is it converts a particular color of line into a particular thickness when you go to plot. Uh, it used to be, it was, a, it was a long holdover from the old days of, uh, instead of a plotter being a giant printer, a plotter was actually something that had little pens in it, and your plotter would pick up a pen and it would draw with the pen. It's actually really cool if you look at the old, there, were, there used to be one that would do it in pencil, so you could have like pencil drawings. Uh, so it was kind of a neat technology, uh, but obviously long past uh, its usefulness. But a lot of offices uh, and firms still use this strategy, where you have a, f uh, a particular file, the colors represent the line weights, and it's translated via this plot style. Um, but again, not something we're going to worry about in this class. Next to that, we have another layer that is basically, can this, the stuff on this layer be printed or be plotted? And so I could, for example, turn off the ability, and you can see that the printer has a little uh, red slash next to it, saying, nope, anything on this layer won't be printed. And so that can be very, very useful for things that you want to have drawn, but you don't want to end up being printed, guidelines and stuff like that. Uh, and so we'll use that a little bit more next class. And then this last one has to do with whether the particular layer is viewable in a viewport. Um, and it'll, it'll make more sense when we get to paper space what that means in the first place. But uh, for right now, you can safely ignore that. So that's essentially what's happening here in the layers um, menu. Now, if we wanted to change objects onto certain layers, uh, we have to do a couple things. One, we have to create the layers to begin with. And so you can choose to name your layers anything you want in this class. I would, however, like to point out that if you work for an architecture firm, there is a set of standards of how you name particular layers. And so, for example, uh, a wall layer is typically named A-wall. So if I were to create a new layer, let me bring up that layer properties window again. The new layer button is right here. It's a little layer stack with a little orange star on it. And if I were to name a wall layer um, in, in a firm, it would in all likelihood be called a wall. Sometimes they use all capitals. Sometimes they use uh, not capitals. Um, it varies a little bit. But generally speaking, the A refers to this being an architectural drawing. And so if you were working with a civil engineer, they would do C dash whatever their layer is. If it was, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, an energy engineer, it might be E, or an electrical might be E. It might be ELEC for electrical. Uh, there's, a, there's a set of standards. You can obviously, you can pull those up if you want. I just want to point out that there is convention for how you name things. Uh, for, this, for the sake of this class, if you just want to call the layer wall, that's OK with me too. It's really up to you. So I've created a layer called wall. Uh, I'll probably do a few more layers. I'll create a layer called door. I'll probably create a layer called window. Maybe I'll create a layer called furniture, or yeah. Uh, and maybe a layer, uh, let's call this fixtures. And maybe one last one, and we'll call it finishes. Now, this is by no means has to be. Uh, a right or a wrong, you know, you can, you can make up your, your, your names however you want. If you organize certain things on certain layers, it can be very helpful. Um, and you'll see that in just a second when I start to assign line weights and, and, and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting everything because the bulk of what I'm ultimately going to be changing um, is the walls. And I could, I could select everything and then deselect, or I could come in here and start to select individual walls. It's really just uh, dependent on your own preference uh, as to which order you want to do it. Go across there. And once I have some of these selected, let me just get through here for a second. All right. So I have these selected right now. If I want to change them from being on the plan layer to being on the walls layer, with them selected, all I have to do is click on the little drop-down menu and select which layer I want it to go to. So I want these to go to wall. So we'll go ahead and click on wall. And now those are on the wall layer. Okay. So if I continue to select, 
you'll see that it'll change from saying wall to saying nothing. And when that happens, like it does right now, it means that multiple layers are currently selected. So I can continue, and we can get more of these pieces here, like this. I probably should have joined my um, walls together. It would have made selecting them easier. Now notice I am using both the select from the right and the select from the left. So sometimes I drag through an object to select everything that it touches, and other times I go around an object. So here I might go around to select that, and then through these two to select those two. Like these. From right to left to select through all of those. Oh, looks like I accidentally Grab that. OK, so I think that I now have all of my walls selected. And again, I'll come up and I'll select wall. And now those are selected. So now the advantage here is since they are on the walls layer, I can lock them or I can turn them off. So if, for example, I turn those off, we could look at my plan and see if I missed any. Because I shouldn't see any now. Right? Doesn't look like it. I missed this one over here. That needs to go on the wall there as well. All right, so now those are all on the wall layers. Now, I can change the line weight of the wall. So if we look at the back of this sheet, I'm suggesting the wall be 0.4. So I'll change the line weight right here of the wall layer such that it's 0.4. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And now all of my lines that represent the walls are a little bit thicker. Okay, So now I need to go through and I need to select, say, the windows. We'll do the windows next. So let me go ahead and make my life easy by either freezing the wall layer or locking the wall, wall layer. I'll go ahead and freeze it because I don't really need to see it. And now I can select, those are all windows. Those are doors. These are windows. Those are windows. Oh, looks like I missed one little piece of wall there. Go back and get that. And these are windows. All right. I think, oop. Oh, those are sliding glass doors. We'll put those on the door layer. So let me go ahead and change these to be on the windows layer. OK, so those are now on the windows layer. And I suggested that the window lines be 0, 0.00 in thickness. So I'll open up my layer properties, and I'll look at window, and I'll change the line weight to 0.00, .00 and I'll say OK. And then we'll go ahead and turn off the windows now. And now that the windows are off, we can look at other things on, on my particular plan. So maybe we'll do the doors next. So I'll take these doors, and I said these were sliding glass doors, so I'll take them as well. And let's put those on the door layer. All right, and then once again, I suggested that the doors, did I not put a door on here? Oh, there's the door, 0.18. So I'll take the door layer, and I'll change the line weight here to 0.18. Say OK. Now, I did change the line weight. Unfortunately, not all of the thinner line weights show up on the screen. So I changed the line weight of the doors. And it really hasn't, hasn't made a difference. Um, the line weights are, are turned on right here. There's a little button that turns them on and turns them off. But again, I can't really see them. There is an ability under line weight settings to change how uh, the, 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 the display, sorry, I can't talk this morning, the display scale uh, in terms of being able to show more or less of the line thicknesses and how thick they show up. And so, for example, I could say that, and then, then those will show up as a little bit thicker. 
By default, they don't show up, but it's, it's again, it's up to you. So now my doors are selected. So let's take these and make sure that those are on the door layer too. All right, and then we'll turn off the doors. There. Uh, let's see what else. Well, these were supposed to be on the wall layer, so let's turn those onto the wall layer. And I have a few other things, like the, the kitchen here probably needs to go on something like the fixtures layer. Or maybe the finishes layer. Finishes might be more, more accurate. Put it on the finishes layer. I'm going to change my line weights back, that line weight scale, because it's bothering me here. Back to the middle. All right. And this is a wall, and that's a wall. I missed those. And then let's go ahead and turn everything back on. There we go. So if the line weights are on, we see that the walls are a little bit thicker, but now I've adjusted for some things. So this one uh, and this one, these are little extra pieces. Maybe the stairs, um, this, this, and that. Uh, probably need to all go on some other layer. We'll, uh, we'll call those finishes. For, for lack of something better to put them on. Uh, but I could create some other layer. So I've essentially, I've established some of my um, line weights so that I'm ready. Now, sometimes I want one of these lines to show up as like a dashed line. So these lines represent um, a ceiling that's above. And so maybe I want those to show up as a dashed line. Um, I can do two things. One, I could put them on a layer and adjust the line type of that layer or I can adjust them individually. So if I have them selected, instead of going to layers, I can go to properties, and I can make individual adjustments on the selected objects. So I'm going to change their line type down here to be hidden. And now they're hidden lines. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to see those until you switch over into one of our layout tabs, which will make sense as we go forward what that means. But you should see it in here which of course you're not. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into that later on. OK, so those are set up as hidden too. Yep, good. So now I've gotten to the point where I have a decent floor plan. I'm happy. I have a little bit more uh, line weights that have been established. Now I want to start adding more to this particular drawing. Um, and I could, and, and like I have here, I've already drawn in a kitchen sink. But maybe we'll get to a point where I want to put a bathroom right here. And instead of actually going and finding or drawing a toilet, I'm going to go find a toilet uh, to put in. And so what we're looking for is something called an AutoCAD block. And a variety of websites have blocks available to you. There are some blocks that are available within AutoCAD itself. And I'll show you how to get to those in just a second. But I want to point out that you can go uh, first in architecture is a, a good example. They have a series of CAD blocks that you can pick from. Um, and of course, none of the, the images are loading here. Come on. There we go. So depending on what you're interested in, let's go here. It looks like they have vehicles, restaurant and bar equipment, lighting. Uh, so here's an example of some of theirs. Right? There's some patio furniture. You wanted to put a barbecue in, for example. Somebody's already drawn that. Uh, here's our kitchen appliances, sink, stove, etc. So that would be a good one. So I'd probably download that one. And in fact, I already have. Here's a bunch of furniture, tables, chairs that I could put in. There's some people here, office equipment. Oh, here's some toilets. All right, so maybe this one would be a good one to download as well. Go ahead and download that. Now it's going to present you with two choices. One is imperial, one is metric. Imperial means feet and inches. So that's what I'm going to pick because that's what we're working in. Uh, and it will download as a little zip file here. There it is. And I want to copy that to my flash drive. And I have a tendency to put them inside a resources folder inside AutoCAD, and then inside Blocks as a way of keeping track of where these things uh, go. 
So let's switch back into AutoCAD. So I found that, and I want to be able to bring it in. So we have a couple different choices for how we do this. The first thing that we're going to do is click on this insert ribbon that runs across the top of the page. Right? And we can go straight to this button called Insert. And this is if you already have the block in the first place. So I'll go ahead and click on this Insert button. And it'll bring up this little Insert window. And I'm going to click on Browse. And I'm going to go find that bathroom set that I just downloaded. Bathroom Details. Here it is. And I'll go ahead and say Open. Then I'll say OK. And it's going to ask me where to put it. And so I'm going to put it right there for right now. And I'll hit Enter to finish. And this brought in all of the various pieces that were included in this file. So if I wanted to use one specific one, I'd select and then type Explode. And it will break it apart such that we can pick the individual block. So for example, right here, I can pick just this particular toilet. And I can go ahead and I can move it over into my building. Let's turn off ortho here for a second. There it is. It needs to be rotated, so I'll select it. Now again, I can do these operations by picking the tools, or I can type rotate. Depends on what's com what you're comfortable with. Let's turn that over. Let me turn on ortho again. There. And I'll move this up against my wall. Actually, it should go out a little bit. I don't know what this line is behind it, but we'll, we'll leave it there for right now. Uh, let me move it so it's even with this wall, and then I'll move the whole thing maybe five feet over. Something like that. So now I've placed the toilet into my scene here. Now if I wanted one of the, the bathtubs, right, I could come over here and I could grab the bathtub, and I could move that again over into my building. And I'll need to rotate it. That, and then I'll place this, or I'll move this into that corner there. Now I have a little bathtub that's there. Uh, maybe this needs to get a little bit closer to the bathtub. So maybe I'll move it over, something like that. Right, now obviously I need a sink and, and, a, and uh, more pieces of this. I don't know that it has included any sinks, so I may need to go find another sink, uh, or I may need to draw the sink uh, so that it would go in here as well. So there is also something that's called the, um, the uh, Design Center that's built into AutoCAD. And if we had um, the architectural version of AutoCAD, they would have more stuff collected in this. But there is some stuff available to you. So in the same insert ribbon, if we go all the way over to the right here, we can click on something called the Design Center. And if I do that, and this is, this is always one of those challenging things, if yours doesn't automatically open into this folder, you have to navigate to this folder, which is really annoying. Um, it's under sample and then en-us and then design center. If you have trouble finding it, I can help you through it. Uh, and what we're looking for is the house designer and then the blocks from the house designer. And so we can see a variety of things that are available to us. So for example, I have a toilet, a top toilet. If I double click on the top toilet, I can say OK, and I can drop that toilet into this scene as well. It right, looks like it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more generic of a toilet. We can move this down, and I can move it over. Oh, come on. Well, you get the idea. Right? Now, there may be other things that are useful. Uh, so there was a bathtub here. Here's a sink. I said we needed a sink. I'll double click on the sink. I'll say OK. And now I can drop the sink into this scene as well. I'm going to get rid. Let's, let's move this a little bit more here. I need a little guide to help me out here. Um, Over there, this toilet. And we 
we've got this one. Now maybe I need to draw in the counter. So we'll go two feet and then uh, move. And so these are just all little small moves and rotates, etc. So move again, and we'll set this back maybe three inches, and maybe one inch. Yeah. Something like that. So I'm using these pre-made objects to populate my bathroom. Okay. If we go back to that design center, there are other things that are available in it as well. Um, let's see what's under house space planner. Again, on any of these, you can click on these and then click on blocks and it'll show you other things that are available. So it looks like this has uh, a table and a sofa. Right, there's a sofa with a round back. There's a grand piano. I mean, how they pick what's going to be here, I, I don't really know. Um, but you can pick any one of these things. Um, we've got some power and electrical things, which you're not going to worry about. Let me just house designer kitchens. Here we go. Let's look at what they have for kitchens. So under blocks here, um, we have. Let's see, there's a stove. There's a refrigerator. I need a refrigerator, so we'll double click. I'll say okay. And I'll drop it in there. I need it to rotate. And then let me go ahead and move this into that lower corner. And now I have a little refrigerator. Okay, so does this kind of make sense for what I'm doing? I'm looking around. Uh, and you really you can find AutoCAD blocks in a variety of places. You can even go to a specific manufacturer website. So for example, you could go to Kohler and pick a specific toilet that is a Kohler toilet and drop that into your, your model as well. So if you knew, oh, I really want this particular brand, a lot of times if you go to that, that website, you can then find that information and drop it in as a block as well. Um, and so anyway, First in Architecture has a good collection. But again, if you just Google um, AutoCAD blocks, or if you know you're looking for something specific, you know, AutoCAD uh, bedroom furniture blocks. Right, there's a variety of them. Not all of them are good. Some of them are better than others. Uh, and essentially, you could, you could look through. It looks like here's a website with a bunch of, uh, of blocks that you could use as well. Okay? So that's inserting blocks into your particular build or into your particular scene. This extra information, when I'm done with it, I'll go ahead and press delete. The other thing that I have to pay attention to is after I've inserted these, they have to go back onto a specific layer. So they probably came in on some other layer, and I'm going to make sure that these end up on the fixtures layer, right? And that the fixtures layer has a, a desired um, a desired line weight uh, associated with it. Okay. So once you have those pieces in place, then it's a matter of continuing. Uh, to enhance your drawing. And so there's, there's a variety of styles for, for what you might end up doing. Um, but I'm going to show you a few more things. So we did blocks. Next thing is going to be hatches. And so sometimes you want to distinguish this is a wall versus this is um, you know, a floor or something else. And one of the ways that we can do that is we can actually use a hatch. And a hatch is essentially a fill of some kind. And AutoCAD has a bunch of them available. If I type hatch. Right, and then enter, it will bring up this hatch creation dialog box. If you can't remember hatch, it is also available somewhere under this um, toolbar. But I always type it, so I never look for it. Uh, it shouldn't be under annotation. It's not under modify. Oh, it's right here. There we go, hatch. Sorry, I didn't even have to look that far. So under hatch. Uh, what I can do is I can specify what the hatch pattern is going to look like. And so if I click this little down arrow, we can get a choice of patterns. So you see, for example, that I can pick solid. right? I could pick diagonal lines. I could pick bricks. I could pick concrete. Right? If I keep coming down here more, there's more. There's smaller bricks. There's something that represents earth. Um, and kind of keep going. Then you can see that there's a variety. I could even have stars if I wanted. Okay, probably not a good idea, but the point is it's available. So what you pick is up to you. Uh, for, the, for what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with just a solid, which is going to fill a particular region with a color. And so I'll go ahead and click on solid. 
And then the way hatch works is by default, it's going to ask me to pick inside of a shape, and it's going to fill it in. Now, the good news is AutoCAD now previews what we're going to see. So if I move my cursor over this particular wall and then click, we've then filled in that wall. Let me fill in that little piece there, fill in this piece there. Now, sometimes you'll get this. A closed boundary cannot be determined. Sometimes that happens because you have ends that don't match up. The other thing that can happen is you can have that happen when you're zoomed in too far. And so there, I zoomed out. I can see the whole object. And now I can pick it. Right? We'll fill in here as well. The area has to be closed. The area has to be closed. And we'll continue filling these in. There, like that. Let me look a little bit closer here. We need a few more. Like that. OK, that looks pretty good. We're going to fill these in as well. OK, so I've now clicked and filled in everything. I'll go ahead and hit the Enter key to finish. And now, all of my walls, instead of being um, open are now solid. Now, if I were to print this, if I went to print right now, and let's go ahead, let me show my options here. The window. Let me hit preview so we can see it. You can see that my floor plan has very punchy walls. They're, they're, they're black, right? So I have solid walls, so it stands out a lot which may or may not be the look you're going for. This reads really well if you are giving a presentation and that, that everybody's far away from your presentation. Right? You can see this really well. You can see where the walls are. It's relatively obvious. Okay? If, I didn't, if I wasn't happy with that, I can change the colors of these walls. So let me go ahead and select my hatch again. Right? Now, the good news is because I did it all as one hatch, when I click on it, it selects the whole hatch. Right? And so now I'm going to change the color of it. And so currently it's set by layer, but I want to change it to a color called 251, which is usually available under index. And click on more colors right there, 251. And I'll go ahead and say OK, which is essentially a dark gray rather than uh, a white. And so it looks a little bit different on the black, but when we go to print it is when it'll look much different. So we'll go ahead and let me just use the last settings. There it is. So now it's, well, you guys on the screen might not be able to tell that it's that different. Let me drop the color uh, again so it's even lighter. This is one of the areas where you really do need to do a test print to see what looks right. I'll do this a little bit lighter here, and then we'll try to print and see if you guys can see it. Yeah, so there you go. So it's not quite as black and white, right? So I've, I've toned down the inside, but we can still really easily tell this is where the, the, the walls are, OK? So I'll go ahead and say um, I'm hitting Escape to get out of that. Now, maybe I want to use the same hatch tool to put some flooring or some brick on the floor or something like that. I can do the same thing. So again, I'll go back to hatch. And let's use this diagonal line. And I'm going to fill in. And I'll fill in the bedroom here. Okay. Now, I probably will end up filling in more, but this is a little bit complicated because I have to make sure that it, it fills in these areas as well. Um, so, well, let's just go for it. We'll do this, do that, this, that, and that. Something like that. Okay. Now, if I were to zoom in really far, we can see that those lines exist, but they're not in the right scale for what I'm trying to, to show. So let me start by adjusting the scale. So right here, I have the ability. It's 1.0 right now. I'm going to just change this. And we'll say maybe start at 2. And we'll see what happens. OK, I still can't quite see it. All right, let's jump up to maybe 5. OK, we're starting to see it a little bit more. Still not quite right. Let's try maybe 10. OK, getting there. 15. Mm, still not there. Maybe 20. OK, that's starting to look more like the scale of flooring. Right? 
maybe 25, maybe 30. So you can tell this is just a trial and error. Now the other thing is I don't want all of my flooring to be diagonal in this house. So I'm going to change right here under angle, right? I'm going to change this to be at say 45, and now all of my flooring is going vertically as part of this. So oops, it looks like I need to do the bathroom as well. So there it is. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now I have this flooring that's been established. Now this is probably a, still a little bit dark, so I'll adjust a few things about this. So let's go ahead and go back to home, and I'm going to create a new layer. So I went to layer properties, and we'll call this flooring. Again, layers are always helpful. And I'll change the color to be a lighter color. We'll try that 253. I'll say OK. Uh, actually, I might have specified on the back here. Flooring, um, I picked a 251. So you can see when you actually print it what 251 looks like. Right? It's a little bit, little bit lighter. So I did 0, 0.00 at a color of 251. So let's change that to be 251. There we go. And align, oops, align weight of 0, 0.00. I'll say OK. And then I'll take the flooring, go back to the home ribbon, and change it onto the flooring layer as well. Okay, So now I've put a little bit of flooring in the background as part of it. Now you would want to place your furniture and your couches and stuff before you put the flooring in because you want the flooring to go around that. Um, so I would do that before. Um, likewise, there may be little spaces like if I didn't want this flooring to go outside of this, it might be a good opportunity to draw a non-printing line that would go across right there before I did the hatch. So it would bound the, the hatch inside. OK, so I've done that. And we talked about line weights already. So the last piece of this is to go ahead and print your, your work. Um, and so we're going to do the same strategy. We'll talk about getting the right scales and stuff as we go forward. But we're going to go to the print or plot menu here. We're going to select the last or second to last option, publish to web JPEG. Use the default paper size. And then I'm going to choose a window plot and pick a window around my object. And then we can preview it. And there it is in its final state. So this is what we're looking for. So today's expectation is walls, windows, doors, furniture, right? And then hopefully you can get to hatching such that you can put a little bit of hatching in as well. Okay? Next class on Wednesday, we're going to start drawing the elevations for your building. And I, I'm guessing that most of you haven't um, totally conceptualized what your elevations look like just yet. But that's OK. That's part of the challenge of it. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of show you how do you construct an elevation based on what your floor plan is and how, what's the relationship of those. Uh, we do guidelines and non-printing layers um, so that you can have those guides to help you kind of establish things. I'll continue working with this particular file so you can see how this one evolves. Um, but that should give you some trajectory. So again, today is about making it look good. Right, so we're going to try to get you the set of skills that you need to be able to have something printed, put it on the wall, and have it look good. All right, are there any questions? No? Great.